A billionaire wanted to make his young model wife happy, so he suddenly jumped into the turbulent river. Seeing that she didn't surface for a long time, his wife was overjoyed in her heart. Today is the day she inherits his billions. Who would have thought that this greasy middle-aged man can actually swim? He did a backflip and swam to the boat like a carp. Another day of disappointment for her wish. But his wife didn't want to miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so she pointed to a cliff in the distance and asked the billionaire to do a 10-meter dive. The innocent and lovely billionaire agreed without thinking twice. He stood on the edge of the cliff and jumped. He did a perfect two-and-a-half somersault before entering the water. Mary recorded this thrilling moment on her phone from the speedboat, as she expected. As soon as the billionaire went under, he never came back up again. To make sure everything went as planned, she even pretended to shout for help twice. After confirming there was no response, she began to imagine her life as a wealthy widow. However, before she could even be happy for two seconds, she suddenly realized that she didn't know how to operate the boat. Faced with this huge object, she felt a bit helpless. She took out her phone to call for help, but there was no signal in the wilderness. The noon sun was scorching the river, and she had been stranded on the boat for two hours. If she continued like this, she would probably die here. To survive, she had to do it herself. She randomly pressed the buttons on the speedboat's console, and by chance, she managed to pull up the anchor and start the boat. However, the boat's movement trajectory exceeded her expectations. The speedboat kept spinning in place, and Mary was dizzy from the spinning. She tried her best to control the direction, but it was useless. If this continued, the boat would eventually crash and people would die. In desperation, she pulled out the key, but she lost her grip on the key, and it fell into the water. Now the boat had stopped but it was still drifting downstream without power. With her IQ reduced to zero, Mary didn't know what to do. She curled up on the boat paddle, hoping for a miracle. Suddenly, the river became turbulent, and a big waterfall appeared nearby. If the boat and the people fell down, only a god could save them. She quickly packed her things and prepared to jump off the boat. But when she came to the stern, she suddenly realized that she couldn't swim. Luckily, there was a swim ring on the boat. Without thinking, she threw the swim ring into the water. Suddenly, she realized that she had done something stupid again. The ring floated away before she could even get into the water. Being extremely clumsy, she had no choice but to return to the cabin, sitting in a corner, praying that God would save her life. Soon, the boat arrived at the edge of the waterfall. With a violent jolt, the boat fell into the turbulent river. Not long after, Mary was lucky enough to be washed up on the shore. Indeed, fools have their own luck. Even God will protect newcomers like her. She quickly took out her phone from her bag and tried to make a call, but there was still no signal. With no other options, she could only sit by the river and have a sip of wine. Pondering her next plan, she emptied her bag and found nothing useful, except for cosmetics. Since there was nothing she could do at this point, she decided to apply makeup to cheer herself up. She applied a seaweed mask, painted fiery red lips, put on a red dress, and wore high heels. Then, she set off on the path of survival in the wilderness. Dressed so brightly, she was afraid that the wild animals in the forest couldn't see her. As expected, she encountered love just around the corner. A row of strange animal footprints appeared on the ground. Following the footprints, she found a big bear drinking water by the river. When it saw Mary's arrival, it immediately smelled the scent of lunch. She ran, and it chased her, but her high heels impede her escape and she falls to the ground. Desperate, she throws one of her high heels at the bear, and to her surprise, the magic attack works. The bear sniffs the shoe and becomes entranced, allowing Mary to narrowly escape. It's another day of surviving a brush with death, and the real challenge still lies ahead. Nightfall descends, and the temperature drops suddenly in the woods. Mary shivers with cold, and she tries to start a fire by rubbing sticks together like a primitive human. After struggling for a while, her hands are rubbed raw, but she still hasn't seen a spark. Helpless, she can only bounce around the woods, moving back and forth to generate heat. Suddenly, she notices a white beast lurking nearby, with poor visibility at night and the fear of the unknown. She panics and runs away. As the beast chases her, she runs blindly, and accidentally kicks a branch on the ground. She falls down in a heap and passes out on the spot. The beast behind her finally reveals its true form. It turns out to be a white fox that has been waiting for centuries. The next day, she woke up from a coma, surprised to find that all her limbs were intact. The beast that chased her last night, turned out to be an adorable white fox. Her anxious heart finally settled down. She took out her phone and tried to make a call, but there was still no signal. She hadn't eaten anything for a whole day, and her stomach was rumbling loudly. She rummaged through her bag, which contained 20,000 yuan, but she couldn't find anything to eat. All she could do was look at pictures of food she had taken on her phone, which only made her hunger worse. After much consideration, she squeezed out a bit of her long-treasured foundation, closed her eyes, and took a deep breath before licking it off her palm. The taste was even more overpowering than wasabi. Hunger and fear filled Mary's heart. She had no choice but to continue on, but she soon lost her way after only a few steps. However, this didn't faze her at all. She just spun around in place and pointed in whichever direction she wanted to go. It may seem mystical, but it worked for her. Just as she was feeling proud of her cleverness, she kicked a pile of dirt and fell face first into the mud. Not only that, but she fell directly onto an ant hill. After brushing off the ants, she began to question her life choices. Why was she so unlucky? The white fox was shocked by her confused behavior. 
and wanted to remind her that her phone had a compass. But alas, the fox couldn't speak human language. Seeing this woman's foolishness, the white fox decided to help her out. It led her all the way to a pond, and Mary drank heartily from it. After replenishing her fluids, she felt revitalized once again. She even stumbled upon two mushrooms by accident, which made her eyes light up with hunger. She cut the mushrooms into pieces with her bank card, added some perfume, and made a delicate mushroom salad. It tasted pretty good, but she forgot one thing. Red umbrella, white stem, eat it and you'll soon be dead. Before she could finish enjoying her meal, she began to feel dizzy and disoriented, and even saw her great-grandmother in a haze. After a bout of dizziness and confusion, she collapsed on the ground and lost consciousness. Fortunately, the mushrooms weren't too poisonous, and Mary woke up from her coma after a short while. It was already evening, and if she didn't find a place to stay soon, she would have to endure another night in the cold. Just as she was getting anxious, she faintly saw a wisp of smoke rising from a nearby forest. There must be someone there. She hurried towards the direction of the smoke, but when she arrived, she found that it was just a natural fire caused by the heat. Once again, she was disappointed. Just as she was about to lose hope, a burnt tree suddenly came crashing towards her. She couldn't dodge it in time, and her leg was trapped underneath the tree. She was so unlucky that even drinking water would have gotten stuck in her teeth. She tried her best to push the tree away, but as anyone who has been to school knows, it was impossible. The white fox beside her couldn't bear to watch anymore, and began to dig the dirt with its feet. Mary understood what the fox was doing, and followed suit, digging away the soil beneath her trapped leg. Once again, she escaped death by a hair's breadth, and hugged the white fox with gratitude. Night fell before long, and Mary and the white fox started a fire to keep warm. Mary prayed that she would find a way out tomorrow, while the white fox prayed to get rid of this burden. Soon, the heavens answered their prayers, and a heavy rain poured down as expected. Mary had no choice but to find another way out, and luckily found a cave to shelter in. She used the remaining fire to start anew. Just as she thought she could finally get some rest, she suddenly felt something gnawing at her foot. She sat up abruptly and found that it was a mouse hole. She was so scared that she cried out in panic, and felt like she had lost her mind. But outside, the thunder and rain continued. She was caught between a rock and a hard place. In the end, facing the rain and the mice, she chose to face the rain. The next day, she woke up from her coma again, and heard the sound of a motor in the distance. She looked up and saw a speedboat on the river. She desperately shouted for help, but the distance was too far. She even took off her red dress in an attempt to attract attention. To her surprise, it worked. A group of people came back and successfully rescued her. Mary, who had been hungry for days, wolfed down her food. As she ate, she recounted her terrible experiences over the past few days, but these men already had their eyes on her, and Mary was still oblivious to the danger that was about to come. There were four men and one woman. The men couldn't wait to drag the woman into a small grove, pin her down and whip her, but before he could take out his weapon, a shiny sharp knife pierced through his chest. It turned out to be the forest ranger in this area, who had rushed over after hearing the commotion. He successfully rescued Mary and killed the attacker. The other men found their dead companion, and started chasing after Mary and the ranger in their speedboat. The ranger drove the boat expertly, dodging left and right, and a thrilling boat chase began. At the same time, Mary didn't just sit idle. She cheered on and encouraged the ranger to fight back. But they couldn't stop the bullets of the thugs, and the ranger's boat soon started to emit black smoke. Mary was forced to find a place to land, and urged the ranger to run with her. However, she was still sitting on the boat stupidly without moving. Just as the thugs were about to catch up, the ranger pulled her away in time, and the two of them ran through the jungle together. Not long after they started running, Mary began to complain. She questioned the forest ranger for saving her, saying that she wasn't in danger of losing her life. At most, she would suffer some flesh wounds. But now, she was being chased by thugs, and she feared for her life. After listening to her ungrateful remarks, the ranger was furious and gave her a good beating. Finally, she was subdued and stopped complaining. After calming down, the two of them continued to flee, and arrived at the riverbank to wait for rescue. But they waited for an entire afternoon, and no boats came by. They had no choice but to camp there and wait for an opportunity. With the ranger's fishing skills, Mary had a satisfying meal. The next day, the ranger collected firewood from all around, preparing to create a diversion. Mary, who had just woken up, still took the time to touch up her makeup. As the saying goes, head can be broken but not the makeup. The ranger lit the fire and created smoke, successfully attracting the attention of several thugs. When the thugs arrived, the ranger had already fled with Mary. They planned to leave in the thug's speedboat, but the boat wouldn't budge despite the ranger's best efforts. Mary wasn't helping and was just sitting there, adding weight to the boat. The ranger reminded her to pick up an oar and start rowing. But after all the chaos and wasted time, the thugs caught up with them. They aimed their guns and fired. The ranger was hit by a bullet, but she used all her strength to push the boat into the water. Mary was scared and shivering in the boat, helpless as she watched the ranger being captured by the thugs. The thugs were furious and wanted revenge on the ranger, but the ranger claimed to have the protection of the mountain god. She warned that if they harmed her, they would incur the god's wrath. 
Then, she performed a ritual, and to everyone's surprise, the wind and rain started to pick up. However, the thugs didn't believe in such superstitions, and one of them attempted to strangle the ranger. But just as she was about to suffocate, the chubby guy who had been converted by the ranger intervened. They thought the story had come to an end, but suddenly, Mary came back and knocked down the chubby guy with a stick. The ranger was speechless. Thankfully, they all survived the ordeal. With their formidable combat skills, the ranger managed to defeat the thugs and send them to their doom. In the end, Mary inherited her wealthy husband's billions, and lived a simple and wealthy life with the ranger. This is a 2022 thriller film called The Wide Daikaya. Do well to watch it if you finds it interesting. Highly recommended.